Hi, right, so this is going to be a little bit of a spare of moment video just about, um, as Todd suggests, a recent experience I had with uh, psilocybin mushrooms. Um, I haven't uploaded in a while. Um, there isn't really a particular reason for this, other than the fact that um, I've just kind of been fed up with my own spiritual progress um, and I don't really feel that this video channel really provides much to people because it's just a bunch of stories and a bunch of experiences that anybody can have themselves. And I didn't really have much in terms of actual um, insights to share with people. That all changed, however, yesterday. Um, um, I've spoken on this channel before about 5-MeO-DMT um, <coughs> um, and BFR various, and how I consider that to be um, the peak um, uh, psychedelic for um, for psychonauts um, and every single experience that I find with psychedelics since uh, 5-MeO-DMT um, has been kind of a derivative of that experience. So uh, in other words, 5-MeO-DMT will affect every other psychedelic experience that, um, that you may have. At least it does for me anyway. Um, so I've had a couple of experiences, maybe I'll talk about them in another video, but it's just been um, a process of um, going deeper into surrender. Because um, I've always struggled with this um, aspect with, of the psychedelic experience. Um, every single time I take a psychedelic, I plan it out in advance. I don't do this for fun, I do this for my own personal spiritual development. At some point in the future, I want to be able to move past this and let this stuff completely go and leave the psychedelics behind. Um, um, but essentially what you're trying to do is get into a position where you're, you're transcending the self and um, leaving this, moving into a permanent um, state. Um, <coughs> so, excuse me. So I did have um, an experience with 5-MeO and I kind of went into it and um, my sense was at the time I was so fed up of my own spiritual um, progress, the fact that I kept progressing and then slipping back into um, existing patterns again. And I went into the, the third experience with a lot of fear, but also a sense of, I don't give a fuck anymore. Just send me as far as you need to send me and I have to just break through this other side and have a, a an experience of complete surrender. And I did, um, but there was still some res residue kind of resistance within there, but it was very, very deep, easily the deepest um, experience that I've had with, with Sykes. Um, after that, um, I, I recently went away on a silent meditation retreat in Italy to try and integrate that experience so that I could meditate, I could get into the silence, um, get out into nature, just get away from everything to kind of just allow it to integrate and, and, to, and to move inside. Which was great and I came back home afterwards feeling really good. I felt like I really made some breakthroughs um, in terms of being able to recognise the monkey mind and how it's um, affected my life. Um, and being able to step back from that and, and allowing a sense of um, um, uh, context in terms of, of, of the way that the mind works. So I came back from, from that, um, back into the UK, and it wasn't long before I started recognising that I was going straight back into these patterns again. All the common pitfalls that you find um, in modern day life. Um, when you're outside of a retreat, you get back into places like London, and the, the sense of unhappiness, um, it's kind of contagious, especially in certain areas. It, it kind of rubs off and you can really notice. I think this is the same for anywhere at the moment. We're going through a global um, recession, we've got war, um, and there's just a sense of anxiety, a, a lot of sense of division, which I think has been exacerbated by social media and the news. And there's a sense of coming back and then falling back into those familiar patterns um, that everybody does in order to get by. And um, yesterday I was watching the um, the Queen's funeral. Um, I'm not I'm not particularly a royalist, but I'm not um, 
against it either um, and my views aren't important either way and I don't care what um, anyone else's view either is um, if you're really against monarchy that's, that's fine if, if you're for it that's fine as well but there was a sense when I was watching it that it's, it's even even on a human level there's someone that people really loved rightly or wrongly but I, I, I looked up to the Queen I really liked her and there was this, this real sense of sadness that a human being whether she was royalty or not, um, was much loved by um, a lot of people. And she was, you know, going through this very dramatic ceremony of, of her death. Um, and I don't know, I just started kind of lying there and getting quite emotional about it. And it kind of just brought up all these thoughts in my mind, you know, all, all of this stuff coming, coming up again. And I got quite upset and I got quite depressed about it. <laughs> rightly or wrongly, whether it's embarrassing or not, I, I, that's how I felt. And um, it kind of, obviously, a lot of the time when these things happen, it, it, it kind of reflects on your own life and your own kind of mortality and, and this identification with the self. Um, and this sense of frustration and tears started welling up and welling up and welling up. And I kind of thought, you know, I could, I could use a little bit of psilocybin just to kind of make this uh, funeral a little bit more interesting. Um, and I think that it kind of exacerbated this kind of this frustration. It, you know, your senses keep coming up more and more and more. And it was at that point that I started getting angry. I started getting angry at myself. I started getting angry at society. I started getting angry at my own personal um, spiritual development and the frustration that I couldn't get there. Um, despite, you know, everyone have, will have their own personal opinions about what, what enlightenment is and, and how, you know, whether, whether there is actually any free will, whether it actually happens to you rather than you making it happen. It's irrelevant. The, the feelings are still there. So as I got more and more worked up, I had one, I had two, I had three, I had four, and I just started going, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, just fuck everything, fuck it. I'm going to go as deep as I possibly can here with these mushrooms because I'm just done. I'm done with the fucking seeking. I'm done with the philosophy. I'm done with the yoga. I'm done with the meditation. Um, I'm done with eating healthy. I'm done with all the fucking effort. I'm done with people's attitude. I'm done with my own attitude. Um, and I was crying as well in, in, in tears of frustration and anger. So I started getting up and stomping around um, my little flat here, going up and down the corridors. I was kicking. I was crying. I was blowing my nose. I was throwing my tissues everywhere. And um, I was going, bring it, fucking bring it. Let's go, let's fucking go, let's go. I don't care, let's go deep. Let's go as deep as fucking possible. I do not give a fuck. And I kept having more and I had more and I had more. Um, cleared out the first jar, started getting into the second jar because my concern was that I wasn't taking enough. Um, because I wasn't measuring them as I was taking them. I knew how much afterwards, how much was in each jar. Um, it turned out <clears throat> retrospectively that, you know, I, I ate over, over 10 grams of um, penis envy um, and mushrooms, which are, which are very strong. Um, and I was screaming at myself. I was shouting at myself in the mirror. People always say, don't look in the mirror when you're, um, when you're doing psychedelics. So I was like, Fuck that. I'm going to stare at myself in a fucking mirror. Just like if you see the family guy where he's going, hey, who's Peter? And he's like, I don't know if you know the clip where he's painting himself in lipstick. My name's Peter. So I was going, who the fuck is this guy? Who are you? Come on, let's go deep. Bring this shit. Take me to hell. Take me to hell. Take me to heaven. Show me demons. Show me whatever the fuck, because I don't care. I've done these psychedelics now. And this was a complete contrast to what I've had before with psychedelics, where I'm always just nervous, nervous, nervous. Oh no, oh no, I'm doing, I'm doing this amount today, I'm gonna to do this. This was just, I was eating and eating and eating. And um, <clears throat> then the traces started happening with the hands and I didn't care, I was still angry. I was angry at the psychedelics. 
Well, no, I wasn't angry at psychedelics. There were times where I just suddenly looked at the mushroom and I thought, you are so fucking beautiful, man. I want you to fucking show me, take me to the silence. I want to go to that deep silence that, is, um, that sits behind everything. Um, and as the, the, the visuals started happening, I was going, here they are, here come the fucking visuals. Here comes the, the streaming, flowing wood patterns. Looking in a mirror, I was like, come on, make, turn me into a fucking demon. Make my body rot. Do, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't fucking care. And there was no fear. There was no fear whatsoever. It was, I, was, I was just furious. I was just angry as fuck. And this is just the, the ego doing its thing. Um, it's frustration at the world. It's frustration at uh, all of the bullshit, all the bullshit that people listen to, the, the spiritual teachers out there, the, the people who are on YouTube, like me, like just everything. Um, but this got to a point where I literally was stomping around and then I started getting wobbly. You know, I, I, I literally couldn't, couldn't physically walk anymore. Um, and I collapsed on the floor um, behind me. And um, it's just, as, as just before it, that happened, I was still shouting. I was still going, come on, bring it. And then just this voice just went really low, just much lower than this. I don't know what the hell it was. Just, it was very cathartic, very cathartic as this, Kind of like when you when you do ayahuasca, and you 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 purge it all comes out. It's kind of coming out through my voice, and uh, there are just suddenly these moments of eternity where the time just stopped, and I just noticed love behind everything. And then I then I kind of collapsed on the floor, and my my hips were open and my feet were kind of pointing together, and just this voice just started coming up like this and my body just started doing these symmetrical movements kind of like this and I was just looking at it all as oh, like that yeah it was just coming out and out and out and out and it was honestly at that point this is as deep as I've ever been it was it was a complete surrender because I didn't care anymore I just it's like just, just fucking kill me. I don't, I don't care. Just send me to eternity. Just let's go. And I could, I, I could see this strange dimension. It was like, it was literally like breaking through on DMT and 5MeO. In fact, it was indistinguishable from the 5MeO DMT experience. It was exactly the same. If you haven't done 5MeO DMT and you see how people react and writhe around and move. It was exactly like that, completely indistinguishable. The visuals, I can't even describe it. was, it was just, I was just gone, just completely gone. And um, as this voice was coming out, it was like all of this just negativity was just flowing out of this, my body. And it was, a complete ecstasy. It was a complete ecstasy and release as it just slipped into this God state of consciousness. That's the only way to describe it. And I say that deadly serious. That's what it was. It was, it was God. It, I just completely surrendered into God. And I don't know how long I was there for because time completely lost meaning. I don't know how long I was there. I can't even recall the, the visuals, especially. It was just another place. It was just in another dimension. Then, and this is during the day in, in, in this flat, then I kind of must have kind of come around a little bit and I sat up and I, I was I was no longer there. There was no me. I was no longer there. There was just this tremendous sense of peace and equanimity. And it was the most beautiful thing that I've ever experienced in my life. And this is going across multiple, uh, you know, POT, 5MEO, 
um, NNDMT, um, LSD, you know, 2CP, you, you name it, all the, all the usual stuff. Um, and uh, then I purged, so I, I, I th threw up, and it was a very releasing th throwing up, as just all of it just came out. And I was, <laughs> but this is where it kind of gets funny because it was at that time that I thought, I thought this is it, it's done. There's no more seeking, it's over. It's completely over, there's no more seeking. I was just looking, there's just this sense of peace and I could look at my hands and I wasn't, seeing visuals, it was just the sense that I, there was just this sense of complete emptiness. There was still this awareness of thoughts kind of bouncing around, but there was no, there's completely no association with it. And I just kept saying, it's over, it's over, it's all done. I don't have to seek anymore, we're done, it's over. And it was this very strong sense of elation. And I just couldn't stop looking at my hands. Uh, <laughs> I'd take my watch off, I'd feel the watch, and I was just struck by the complete transcendent beauty in absolutely everything. It was, it was samadhi, it was, it was complete, it was complete bliss. It was just done. Um, and I just gently walked around the flat, just kind of thinking, it's done. Then there were thoughts about how am I going to tell people about this? Because I can't tell people about this without them thinking that I'm crazy, but I don't care. And I was thinking, wow, what if, what about death? What happens after death? I said, I don't know but I don't care. I thought, what if all these thoughts I used to have, it's like, imagine everyone thinks about, oh, what, if, what if I get cancer or a terrible disease or something like this? I thought, easy come, easy go. It doesn't matter. There's nothing to worry about. All the anxiety, it was just, it was like, it was just like a complete sense of weightlessness. All the noises outside, all this, all the stuff, all the hustle and bustle was just still there, but there was no aggravation. It was just a complete sense of calm and serenity. And this is the thing I thought, I can't unsee this. This is it. This is done. This is, there's no more, there's no more chasing. There's no more seeking. And yeah, I think, um, I'm just glad I didn't send the messages that I was thinking of sending at that time because there was one part of the brain which was saying, just hold on a little bit. You never know, you never know. I hope this doesn't go away. And then inevitably the thoughts were still there, but I noticed certain thoughts about um, usual stuff in life started getting a little bit of anxiety coming up after a couple of hours, just a little bit. It just started sneaking back in again. And then it became increasingly apparent. I was just fucking high. I wasn't God. I wasn't, I wasn't enlightened. But saying that, um, it was an experience of enlightenment. I don't, um, I don't deny that. I don't think, I don't, um, I don't doubt that for one second. It's a taste of it. And, um, um, and that, is, that, isn't, that isn't me saying this in an egotistical way. This is an experience that's available to anybody um, at any time. But um, yeah, just in that altered state, I was just absolutely convinced it was over. But then the, 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 the journey it wore off and wore off and wore off. And then um, yeah, back to baseline. There is still this tremendous um, sense of an afterglow um, that I have, and um, which I can work on. 
So I just think, um, just with anything, experiences come, they go, you let them go, and then you see them afterwards in the context of what happened. It's just absolutely ripped and psilocybin. Um, and I think that there's an aspect of, um, you know, the ego is wanting to, to have this thing, and the angle is cranking up, cranking up. And that was fine, you can use that. You can you can use your ego sometimes to use that frustration to push you um, through to the through to the next level. Um, so yeah, I'm, that's that's kind of it, guys. I just thought I'd share about it because it was it was just such a profound and interesting experience. That it's just it's just fascinating because I've, I've never been that deep before. And again, indistinguishable from five MEO. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts below. I'm be interested to hear them. Even if you think I'm chatting absolute bullshit, I know what a psychedelic community are like, um, and spiritual community, sometimes there can be these kind of, you know, judgments. I don't care, guys, put it in the comments. It helps, um, it helps the algorithm. Love you all. Peace out. Bye-bye.